Well, hello everyone, and I am uh, William Stewart here with USC Darts Productions. Proud to be joined, honored honestly, to be joined by this guy sitting uh, next to me, Mr. Alan Suter, PDC Tour Card Holder, and uh, so much more. How you doing, Alan? Yeah, very good, Bill. Good to join you, and a uh, good little chat about sport before we started. So yeah, quite excited <laughs> for this interview. Really nice. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll chat some F1 and, and so much more beforehand and career stuff. So, um, yeah, just, just honestly, it's it's so awesome to get a little bit of your time before the, um, your Alley Pally debut. Um, you've, you've, your first year on the tour was honestly pretty amazing. Uh, so I, I, before we get into that, I just want to kind of, kind of get into some stuff about your life. I mean, of course, you're, you're, you're married, you have, you know, a career but besides darts you you're a firefighter um and you're also a service dog trainer you do some work with as an ambassador for Albroth football club as well as numerous things you do for youth darts in scotland so first off what do you what exactly is is your role as a firefighter are you are you in the are you in the nitty-gritty th things right now what what do you do there <clears throat> yeah so i've um i've been in 17 years so i've got a bit of experience and I'm a full-time, in, in, in Britain it's called a full-time firefighter, so we have part-time and full-time guys. So I'm a full-time firefighter, I've done that for 17 years, so yeah, I'm, I'm in briefing apparatus, in-house fires, in road traffic collisions, I'm in, in everything, hands-on, in everything I possibly can. O only a few weeks ago, before uh, the Pro Tour in Barnsley, I was 6am one morning before I left to go to Barnsley, I was dealing with a fatal house fire. So yeah, it's a bit, it's a proper hands-on in and out, in about fires and whatever else. So yeah, but that's my job. That's my first and foremost. That's my bread and butter and how I pay the bills. So yeah, it's um, it, it it's a, it's a good job. It's a rewarding job, but it's also got its its darker side, which um, I think that's ingrained in me that I can deal with those kind of things. So it, it's great. It's great to work in a job like that because it's again for me, it's a community-based thing so it's all about serving the public so yeah it's 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 enjoyable you've always been about community and and kind of your country and i mean you've 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 done that for years with the wdf system i mean being on team scotland and and you know kind of your brother with ross montgomery i'll throw him out there because you you know you've had him for a long a long time you know you've been cheering each other on that kind of stuff so yeah i mean good you know it's you don't think of that think about that you know, really in the background when somebody says firefighter, how, you know, how that can play on your mind, especially, you know, playing darts. I mean, we all know it's a big mental game at darts and, you know, that confidence and kind of what goes through your brain at the hockey can really, you know, force your hand on a double or not, you know. So, yeah, it's something that you got to deal with as well as, you know, being a service dog trainer. That's a lot of work in its own. I mean, you've had a, how many service dogs have you uh, trained now in total? Yeah, so so we now have we have puppy number five. So we do guide dog puppy raising for guide dogs Scotland. So um, we've been doing it for four or five years now. Mostly Amanda, she's she's the main lady that does everything. I kind of chip in when I can when I'm here. But um, we're just back from a two hour sort of training walking session. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's rewarding because two of our dogs have went on to become guide dogs so far, and one of them who didn't pass we've kept as a pet so she's a fully trained guide dog who we have as a house pet so she's immaculately behaved and um i think that the big plus for me is when you when you give the dog back and it goes on to progress to be a guide dog it's then becomes someone's eyes and ears and it uh, gives them their independence back so i think that's i get rewarded by my job and i get rewarded by my darts life so why not give something back to people less fortunate of course well, you, you, you've done it, you know, with the guide dog service and you're also doing it with the youth dart scene. I mean, your presence alone and it, with Team Scotland and, and, and around your community really pushes people to strive for, you know, what look at what you've done. I mean, you've had a, quite the career in amateur darts and then turn around and get your PDC tour card and be successful so far doing, you know, doing that route. Um, it's really incredible. And giving, giving something back, you know, it, it's it's kind of unique and kind of you just kind of seen that go your way with Albroth Football Club offering you that ambassador spot you know talk about that what does that mean to you yeah that I didn't expect it to be what it was I was going down there to speak to one of the guys about a darts exhibition and maybe doing something at the football club which 
was going to be cool and something interesting and different, but when I got there, it was different. It was all about the ambassador role, and honestly, I've never felt anything like the support that they want to give to me as a dart player, as a person, as guide dogs, as the darts academy. They want to support everything that we're doing. So I've been lucky enough to be at the last couple of games watching um, in the boardroom, suited and booted, feeling part of the whole setup of the club. And it's just the club are, are doing really well just now in the Scottish Football League. So I think for me to be a part of that journey, me and Amanda both go down and we take the dog, Disco, the guide dog comes with us as well. So it's a real, a, a real massive honour for me. And it, it's kind of rekindled my love of football because I, I played football before darts. But um, I've kind of reignited that and, and became an Arbor football fan again, second time round. So, yeah, it's it's, it's unbelievable that, sort of, that a football club will bestow an honour like being an ambassador on me. It's, some of the other guys, there's a Commonwealth, double Commonwealth gold medalist that's an ambassador, Darren Burnett. There's um, Johnny O'Mara who plays in the, the tennis tour. He's a, a brilliant doubles player in the tennis. He plays at Wimbledon and Roland Garris and everywhere. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool being an ambassador. Really cool role. Yeah, I was I was about to say doing doing a little bit of research before this. There's a couple other you know sporting stars that got the opportunity to be an ambassador, and kind of you yeah. getting the opportunity as well is kind of kind of awesome. That you know it's a, just a small handful of people that have got that honor, and you're you're yeah. you're now one of them. So that's that's really cool. That's really awesome. So kind of you know getting to know a little bit of background about yourself. Of course, you have a wife and you, Amanda, right? Yeah, yeah, Amanda. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how long have you been with Amanda? Wow, put me on the spot. It's, uh, well, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> we've been we've been together for fourteen years. So yeah, we've, we've had a, a pretty long relationship. And Amanda, Amanda loves darts and she plays darts. So she, she plays at a pretty decent level, county level in Scotland as well. So her love of darts probably helps me be able to follow my love of darts. You know, because you need someone to be a bit understanding when you're away weekend after weekend or week after week at the darts enjoy enjoying yourself you know so uh, yeah i'm glad i'm glad i have a partner that's on board and she's she's so calm and relaxed so when i'm at home it's all it's all about us and all about the dogs and family so we're 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 in a great place right now and, and that probably helped in january at q school and then this this whole year's been pretty easy pretty easy from a working everything out point of view from travel from home life from work from all that stuff amanda's fully on board with it all and the reward is that we're going to make our life a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable, and she's coming to Ali Pali next week, so super. That's great. Yeah, that's great. And I know we, we did talk about going down that route, but I mean, it's just a, a massive part of your life, of course, being, you know, your, your better half. I'll say that, you know, with, with a good stand, a better half. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. And any bloke that says any difference, a liar. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, moving on, moving on, I wanted to talk about kind of your career, your amateur darts career. Um, first time I got to meet you was uh, on the WDF side of things, you know, um, we uh, met at the WDF Virtual Cup. I was able to stream a couple of your matches on that, which was unique, very unique opportunity, but I was thrilled to have that opportunity, you know, to stream you and, and Danny Baggish playing each other and then, you know, the finals as well. But, you know, besides that, you've had two WDF World Championships appearances, 2011, 2016, and then one big WDF team, team win for you the WDF World uh, Cup for Scotland, you know, so many years on that circuit and then finally, you know, making the jump this year after I think a couple pe people were pushing you that way, you know, I think I heard some Gary Anderson was really kind of giving it to you, telling you, hey, give it a shot, give it a shot. And then talking to the wife, you know, he decided to give it a go, it really turned out well for you. What do you think about your WDF career and then making that jump? Yeah, so it, it, to, to so the viewers understand, I kind of I play darts as a hobby, and I always have. And 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 in Scotland, the the number one thing you can do in darts is represent your country. You know the 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 WDF, the Lakesides, the World Championships, the World Cups, all those things are individual moments. But if you can represent your country, and when you put on the the blue of Scotland, there there isn't many better feelings in the world. And in, in any sport, you know, you can speak to the guys that play football for Scotland and. In any sport, it's just the privilege you get to play for your country has to be ranked way above personal achievements. I think so. 
yeah, my wall, the wall behind me up here is, is littered with pictures of myself and Ross Montgomery, who, you know, I won 11 WDF medals at World and Europe Cups with Roth. Mostly as a, a pairs team, some individual medals, some team medals, but um, myself and Ross were pretty prolific in the pairs events. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd get bronze medals, silver medals. You know, we, we we got deep runs every single time we went to events. So we were always um, pretty formidable. And I think a lot of teams around the world wouldn't have, wouldn't have enjoyed seeing Suter Montgomery on the draw sheet next to them. So I think, <laughs> yeah, that side of it is... Um, tremendous because you can do it as an amateur and you can get to the highest level in that playing at Lakeside two times was fantastic um, a real experience because like the guys are going to experience in January now with the WDF taking on the, the new mantle that Lakeside is an iconic place and, and all the greats that have stood on that stage before you it, it all sinks in when you're in the venue and when you play there so I, I love that side of it but yeah the, the, the push to go PDC was was there from lockdown because of all the virtual darts and because of how many I probably played more darts in in lockdown than I've ever practiced in my life and the the, the virtual cup was that was tremendous because to get on the stream you you know some games were streamed some games weren't so when you played on the stream you were you were nervous but you were up for it and you wanted to play it and then to play I was watching Danny Baggage playing in America thinking look at this guy he's he's <laughs> taking over he's doing he's doing a lot in the US so. Uh, to be honest, we, our game wasn't that great. We didn't we didn't live up to the billing, but um, I was lucky enough to beat him. But since we both got our tour cards, I've had some great trips away, great trips with Danny, having a beer, having a playing some gambling games. You know, just being part of his company. He's an absolute top guy. So yeah, it's a it's a good friendship that got forged through WDF Virtual Cup. So thank you very much to the WDF and to yourselves at USA Dark Production. It's that's. That's what makes um, darts a special sport because of the family, the connections that you get when you're playing all these different guys from around the world. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that. I, you know, kind of because both you guys got your tour card the same. You know, the same. I believe the same that same. You know, weekend. Yeah, at Q school. Yeah, at Q school, and and uh, he did it on his last day, I believe. Uh, it, tough, tough stuff, right? <laughs> I can't remember when you got your your card, but you know, to kind of say, you know, to go from that match and then to turn around and be both on the on the tour now, and you know, you say you hang out, have a beer once in a while. And some, there's a reason why they call him the gambler. Of course, you're gonna do some gambling yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> here and there, but yeah, you know, yeah. that that's that's talks a lot about how how the dart scene is. Um, but yeah, you know. Years on the WDF circuit. I'm glad you mentioned Rost and 11. I didn't know it was 11 uh, medals. Wow, that's a massive amount. You're right. Yeah. I don't think anybody yeah. wanted to take on you two, but now no. you get the chance, you know, to get to to you know dabble at the Alley Pally after a really impressive start on the PDC tour. I mean, you you started what? I think it was t we were we were chatting about it for it was like 10 for 10 or 11 for 11 in first round wins and I think most of those really most of those players championships or whatever they were were top 64 so there were actually a couple wins and then you earn your spot maybe in the top 32 as well talk about you know how that successful start really kind of implemented you can you can hang with these guys you can really play yeah I think that the the, the, the nervousness of winning the tour card was great and then the real realisation is okay the guys at Q School that you beat are not part of the tour the guys that you're now going to play are established pros that have been doing it for forever and it's a different level but I think in my head I always thought I can play I know I can play 90 to 105 average if I'm comfortable and I play my best darts and, and sometimes even more than 105 so I didn't didn't feel daunted or, or scared or nervous about playing these guys but I got hit with bad draw after bad draw after bad draw my first few events I was like come on give me the give me the guy that's not seeded so they did one <laughs> day they gave me they gave me the non seeded back to back world champion Adrian Lewis yeah. he wasn't a seed he wasn't a seed and I played him and come on give me it but yeah to beat to beat them guys that that's I think that's probably why you play darts you got You've got levels, you know, and there's a lot of guys playing in these these leagues online as well just now that are all different levels and graded dart leagues and different things. So if you want to get better, you've got to play the guys that are better than you. You've got to put yourself against a stronger opponent and 
see if you swim or or sink. So I, I think I can hold my own. Um, the, the, the going unbeaten first round, first round, first round, first round became a thing. So every time you went to the venue, it was like, okay, if you win today, there's only a few people that have done this so far. And it ended up, it was down to three when we went to Germany. And it, two of them lost on the same day when I won, which gave me the the plaudit of being last man standing for not losing in the first round, the whole of those 10, maybe, I think it was 11, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But um, those are not, those are not sort of accolades that, you, that you're you that concerned about. That You're more concerned about, like you said, about progressing up the rankings and get, getting yourself into events. Because I think the PDC, the way I look at it now is to qualify for the Players' Championships and to qualify for Ali Pali, it's all on the floor, it's the Pro Tour. So you need to turn up in the Pro Tours and put a marker down and get yourself in that top 32, top 16. If you can qualify for those two events, that's a good year, I think, for my first year. But then you start to look at, you need to put more money on that ranking and qualify for the match play, qualify for the Grand Prix, qualify for other events that are big, harder to achieve. I yeah. Think it's, maybe, it's maybe giving the world, the world Championships an injustice here, but I think to qualify for the smaller field events is, is a lot harder. Yeah, no, I, 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 can, I, can, I can see what you mean by that for sure. Um, you know, and kind of talking about, you know, the, the room you're in, you know, with the players, I spoke with Danny Baggish and he was saying that, you know, at Seacoast, he was like, I played the best darts of my life the past two months. It's just everybody's a good player in that field. You're not, everybody's a tough draw. And, you know, not to mention the big boys like MVG and, and, you know, Gerwin Price, you know, those kind of guys. But, you know, for you, you did have a big finish this year so far at top 16 at the UK Open. And I did want to mention that, you know, what did that mean to you? You beat Raymond Van Barneveld, the big, big name on this, on the circuit. I know that probably meant a lot to you, but finished in top 16 in the UK Open is something to be proud of. What, what are your feelings on that? Yeah, so the build up to that, you know, there was Pro Tours before it to jostle for position to see where you would be if you came in in round one, round two, and that all. I done all right the first couple of Pro Tours, so I thought, oh, good, I won't get some of the bigger, harder players first round. Raymond Van Barneveld, like, come on, <laughs> yeah, how, right. how, how, come on, <laughs> you can't keep you can't keep giving me these draws. But um, I knew I knew Ray was just coming back, and he was just starting back from having a, a bit of time out. But um, having no fans in the venue in Milton Keynes probably helped me more than him because I think there would have been a big Barney following. And I just went on the stage and played darts. So I played all right. I didn't play amazing, but I played all right. And it was, it was in the end, 6-3 was comfortable against Barney. But um, to, me, to make the last 16 of those events, I think I played on the main stage twice and then went to the floorboards and played Stevie Bunt and then Ron Mullenkamp. So playing those guys on the sort of outer boards was better for me as well, away from the TV cameras and just it's just darts. So it's a bit like playing a floor tournament. So to beat both of those guys, which I, I felt comfortable playing against both of them, I'm friends with Steve, so it was a bit of a tougher game. But um, you get through all that and then you get back in the last 16 and you think, by the way, you're doing all right here for a guy that's ranked 90, whatever it was in the world at the time. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and the disappoint if if you can be disappointed, I was disappointed to lose in the last sixteen. I was eight six up on Chizzy and lost ten eight. So those are kind of things that you take away from it and say, yeah. If you sit down at the end of the day and go, that was a good tournament. I put a lot of money on the rankings. It jumped me up a few places. But um, still being disappointed is a good thing. Yeah. Because that feeds hunger for the next time you play in an event and think, I'm going to do better. I, I, I want to beat these guys. And I think. In my head, if you get the right run and the right little bit of luck here and there, there's nothing stopping one of the lower ranked players having a great run at an event and, and making a, a deep quarter final, semi final, final run. But it's all about timing in these majors, you know. Floor events are, are great and you can you can get to I've been a semi final and two quarter finals this year, but imagine you've done that in a major. That would mm-hmm. be you know, that's priceless if you could do that at Ali Pali or to do that at a big tournament on T V. But there's a lot of factors that go against that. So we'll just... The UK Open was a probably, obviously, my first major in the PDC. So it got people talking. It got me noticed. It, it, it threw me into the spotlight even more so. So, yeah, it's all that stuff's really good. And I'm glad that I, I 
performed at a decent level to showcase that I can play at that height. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and you know, your performances early in the year really cemented kind of your opportunity that's kind of arose. And now, where well, you're going to get that opportunity to step on the big stage that is the Alley Pally, you know, what does that mean to you getting the opportunity to play Diego Portela in the first match? Yeah, it's, um, I think when you when you start in the PDC, you kind of you don't know where you're going to be in the jostling. You don't know where you're you're going to sit in the positioning. But very early on, it was pretty evident that I can mix it on the Pro Tour. So picking up win after win after win. And I was closing in on the points or the money ranking points that you need to be in the top 32 in the Pro Tour or the Merit by the end of the year. And it was months ago that we already knew, just using different factors. Like there's a, there's a FDI index on Twitter. Mm-hmm. They run scenarios and they, and they know what you need and they know how, how you need to perform to get to certain levels so to, to make it into that a few months ago was tremendous because I could relax but then maybe my results haven't been that good the last few months um, I've lost a, a, I lost a, a raft of first round matches but I think maybe relaxing is the wrong thing for me to do I need to go in there still buzzing and, and, and up for the fight you know if you lose it's like it's okay I've already qualified but that's not the way to be Every I think for guys at my level Every single five hundred pound, every single thousand pounds you can put on your rankings is huge at my level, and it helps you jump up and close the gap on the guys above. So, the the Ali Pali stage next Sunday, a week today. Um, I think hopefully COVID doesn't put a span on the works, but it's a bit bad in Scotland just now, and we kind of I'm just staying closed in the house, away from everybody apart from going to work. I just hope that it doesn't stop the crowds and like last year's emptiness of the venue but I'd, I'd love to walk out on that stage with my walk on music with people that I know my sponsors are going to be in the crowd my brother Amanda and, and our son Logan that, that, that those moments are moments that you can't you can't put a price on you can't you can't even quantify it it's just as it happens you got to suck it all in and enjoy it I've been to Lakeside twice so to play in both world championships is there's not a lot of people that have done it and there's not a lot of people around just now that have done it so it's quite a unique thing so that's that's something I'm looking forward to and yeah playing Diogo never played him before never met him before in my life so that's a good thing because yeah. <laughs> I've got no I've got no friendship I've got no allegiance to him I've no, nothing so I'm just going up there to take him out my way yeah no 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 feelings is is good because you can just go up there and take yeah. care of business hopefully and and, and then hopefully, hopefully. Mi- meet Minsa Rasulovic in the next round which would be which would be a great you know i think that is i think honestly for for you for a man like yourself this is honestly a great draw for, for and a great opportunity for yourself to kind of you know show what you can do possibly make a run here if you can and you mentioned it before you know it's just those matches every once in a while you, you know, pick up a couple legs, and then all of a sudden you just ride it out, and you can win the match. You know, that's the thing about it. So, I'm I'm anxiously, you know, waiting to see what you can do here next next weekend. Um, you know, what are you going to do here in the next week? Are you going to be doing some JDC virtual? Or are you going to be hitting up some doubles? What's your plans for preparation? Yeah, so I I, I I practice all the time. So behind me is my practice board in my room. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. bit. Good bit of zigs on. So I am. Um, I practice a lot now, so I do JDC virtual 100%, do a good few routines of that. I'm actually doing it with a bit of a competition just now inside Big Five Management, so there's a few of us doing it together, posting a high score and then everyone else to try and beat it, so a little bit of team camaraderie and a little bit of banter, so I love doing that, I love doing Bob's yeah. 27, I love, I love doing, I just love practice routines that are not chucking at the 20. What? Because... I- I think a lot a lot of people just throw it twenty. I think that you, you know, really so, crave that team that team stuff too. I like that you mentioned that. You know, you 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 yeah. thrive off of that. You know, I know you really like the JDC virtual team stuff, and then you know yeah. doing that actual event. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna. I think lone, that. Lone, lone practice is is tough. You know, you can stand it at that, but I sometimes do three, four, five hours in an evening and just do my routines and then play the the bot on that next. So. I think doing that is still good practice, but there's nothing better than sort of the banter and a, and a player-on-player event that you can get stuck in about it. I went to Aberdeen two days ago to play one of my teammates, Sean McDonald, who will be playing at the WDF 
at Lakeside World Championships. He's in that in January. So we went and played set play for five hours in Aberdeen. So I drove for an hour and a half to him just Ooh. so we could play exact set play, exactly what we were going to be doing at, at both events and just push each other. And, and there wasn't any any single match, nothing under 92 average. So we were just trying to push and push and push each other. So hopefully that practice is all in the back pocket. I and mean, when you go on the Ali Pali and the Lakeside stage for Sean, it comes out and the practice pays off. Well, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's exactly what you need to do. Kind of test, test your game, you know, with a real kind of match quality, um, you know, averages as well as an opponent that, you know, can really run with you. Do that yeah. for a little while. And then, you know, for this next week, just take after the board and do your doubles and, and get ready to, you know, play Diego Portela in a great match. I'm, I'm excited for it. I know uh, everybody else is. I just want to thank you for giving us some of your time and probably a little bit more than <laughs> I thought I would get I would get from you or, or wanted to take from you, but I appreciate no you problem. Any, hanging any out with us. Yeah, doing it. It was great stuff. I appreciate you, you know, getting some input on, on your life outside of darts as well as, you know, your WF career and then the PDC Tour card and making this run at the Alley Pally. I look forward to seeing how you play, sir. Good luck to you, and uh, thanks for your time. Cheers, Will. Thanks very much for the support. Thank you.